Hey guys, this is Hannah. Welcome back to my vlog with my boyfriend. But now I'm asking him questions. Not really helping him that much, but that's okay. Talking shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, it's Mighty Lighting. Today we're continuing our Optiplex overhaul. Yeah, you know, where I mutilate my Dell to my will in order to maximize its potential. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just check out my previous video. Link right here. No, not there. Right here. Anyways, moving on. A bit of a disclaimer. I should have mentioned that this footage is several months old and that I'm not an expert, though I definitely like to try to be. So in order to save my ass, I'd just like to mention that some of what I say in this video isn't 100% accurate, but I will do my best to correct and clarify whatever I can catch. I'm constantly learning more and more as I go, and so far, doing all this has been a great learning experience. And since recording this, I've enrolled in some online IT classes, and I hope to be a reliable source of information in the future for you guys. Though this is only my third vid and I only have like 11 subs as of right now, I just wanted to thank you guys for all the questions and support on my last video and hope this video may prove to be helpful as well. If so, feel free to leave a comment letting me know what you guys thought. I did benchmark this CPU, but I will be going over the results in the next video, so let's get on with it. So, you know, you've seen my computer, so you know what it looks like with like that big block is a CPU cooler. Yeah. This is this computer's CPU cooler. So, anyways, the CPU is underneath this, so I have to take it off. Ooh, what's that beneath it? That's the heat sink. So this is the fan. Oh. So, and you don't have the CPU in it. No, this doesn't have the CPU in it. Now the heat sink touches the this metal part of my CPU. Oh, I, like uh, the case? Yeah, the metal case part. Oh. So the heat sink sits right on top of that, and the thing that sits between them is called thermal paste, and mm -hmm. it helps transfer heat. So I'm being kind of dumb. I have to actually take this bit out because this is where the heat sink is, but the heat pipes come from over here. So the CPU is underneath this bit over here. This is my hard drive right here. So this stores all my data, and this is my RAM right here. I have three sticks, which is really, you know, kind of odd, but it came with the original two, so four gigs, and then one eight gig stick. Mm -hmm. I, I wish I had the two in, in the first channel, the two eight gigs, and then, like, no two gig, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so this is, plugs into the motherboard, supplies power from the power supply, right? It's basically like a cable running through the PCB to the power supply to power this fan. And then that's where you put your CPU. You'll see in a second. There's the CPU. Absolutely caked. So these are copper heat pipes. Whoa, wait, what's that though? What's what? All that stuff. This? Yeah. Gunk? That's thermal paste. No, 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 that whole circuit board. The whole green thing, yeah. Oh, the green thing? That's the motherboard. With all this stuff on it, that's just... So these are all capacitors and chips. And that's why I can't I can't mess with this and touch this and stuff. I mean, this is fine. Because I, I could shock it and like these sensitive components, you know. Or, like, what about the work. black thing? Sorry. What about that black thing? I'm this? Sorry. Yeah. This is my GPU. This is the graphics card. Oh. So the graphics card has the GPU. Yes. Okay. So that when I was sense. telling you <laughs> earlier... So you see how this, uh, and again, I'm not exactly sure what these are, capacitors or what, but that, like, bunch of little things on there is where the GPU chip is. So, like, same concept of there's a chip that processes stuff inside here. Um, so, like, this also has the heat sink and, uh, you know, the fan on it, just like this needs a heat sink to cool it. This also needs to be cooled. Like all the wires and stuff, those are just connecting. So a lot, of, actually, a good chunk of like this ketchup mustard mess isn't actually connected. Actually, well, this bit is. So this is the twenty-four pin. It's just powering my motherboard. Uh huh. And then I know they motherboards have this other like four pin or six pin. This one's a four pin, but I don't know where that power actually goes and i don't know where from this 24 pin it goes but like 24 pin connect or like 20 pin whatever your motherboard is is like the main power then all these other cables connect fans or like the the front io or like you know the usb ports and and stuff connected to the motherboard and what does the usb port connect to like from the motherboard like yeah. where does it go yeah cpu and gpu i i don't know probably 
it, RAM. So like when I plug in a thumb drive, it has to be accessed through the CPU, I suppose. It gets registered. So, okay, so everything you plug in has drivers. What I understand is that driver is kind of like a little program or, or you know, that identifies what the, you know, what the device is and what it does and its functionality. So, it, for example, it... my graphics card has drivers that allow it to work and do what it's supposed to. So for the... It allows C it to communicate with the system. What's that? For the CPU and GPU... Has anyone like ever made like a hybrid of that? So it's like a GCPU. <laughs> there are CPUs with internal graphics, so they have the capability of doing what a GPU does. So then they don't need a GPU. But they're never as good as a dedicated. So it's called internal. Uh -huh. This is a dedicated GPU. So this is like that's exactly all it does. Maybe that's what iPhones do, and um, like they probably have one chip that kind of does it all. Yeah. I know the, a chunk of laptops just use the internal graphics. Just less common to have an actual dedicated GPU inside because it does take space and power. So if you're trying to make something that's power and space efficient, so something that's more portable because there's longer battery life and lighter, and you probably just have a... And, and also processors are a different size for laptops. Yeah. So the, you're going to have probably have a processor with internal graphics, etc., but everything's a different size. So, like, this is a different... This is low profile. This is a 1050 Ti, low profile. Technically, it's just like a regular 1050 Ti. But if I have a laptop that has a dedicated 1050 Ti, right, it's not going to have the same performance output as this one does. Same with so, processors. It might be an i9 9th gen in a laptop. So, it's like the i9 9900U or what... I don't even know what those stuff... But, like, it has a different letter versus 9900K or 9900... 9900KS. See, I need a paper towel because this is a mess. Why do I have a problem with applying too much thermal paste? This is, like, the worst thing yet. But that's not a bad thing, though, is it? Uh, I mean, it, it definitely can be. <laughs> well, you'll never have a problem place. with, like, Conducts. thermal. I believe it's conductive, so... Oh. Gosh, so, bad. so another thing to note is motherboards have different chipsets, right? So this is a much older chipset than that one, but that is the same chipset as my old motherboard for that computer. Which the I don't know if the chipset is actually called that, but I believe the chipset is called Z three ninety, right? Chipset, and this was like whatever the heck. So this motherboard will only work with Intel CPUs. If I have an AMD CPU, I need an AMD chipset and motherboard. So for beginners, when it comes to like building computers and stuff, do you recommend an already bought computer and kind of tinker with it? Or do you think it's more beneficial for them to actually build it and research themselves when they're starting out? And they it really don't... depends on the person. Like for me, like would you... For you? Yeah. What would I recommend? Just come over and... No! <laughs> I don't know. That's an interesting question. Because if you buy a system, it's usually it's more expensive. No, it, oh. it depends. Like, this is proprietary. Gotcha. Like, I literally can't even put a different Dell-branded power supply in it because it doesn't match the same form factor. I'm surprised how well this graphics card worked out, but how poorly this power supply worked out. And, like, I can't find a higher wattage power supply that is the actual form factor like the actual you know <laughs> sff or s small form factor if you build it by you know with help or whatever from scratch i feel like there's more potential to learn from that mm -hmm. but if you if you're on your own you have no idea you might want to start with like a pre-built system and not necessarily like a bot system like maybe a custom build offer offer up or just get your hands on a system that's already put together so these are all the little pins that touch the conductor plates. Oh, yeah, so do you need to like things. line up the little pins? Um, it's pretty easy to line up. It's just a matter of knowing which direction um. it goes. So there's this little gold arrow on here, and on the plate here, it's got the little arrow there. I better so look. What's that? I was getting a better look. What happens if you if you have the CPU and you put it in the wrong way and then you start your computer? 
absolutely nothing. <laughs> Will it like ruin the CPU or anything? Or uh, does... You'll probably ruin the pins. I mean, it depends. If you, like, if it's crooked somehow or like, if it's not going in the slot and you force it, you might, you probably will break the CPU, but mostly you'll, you'll bend the pins and then, then you'll have some serious problems and basically you need to make it, get a new motherboard and depending upon what shit the CPU is, also a new CPU. Oof. So is, and the CPU is one of the most expensive parts in the system. Really? I thought well, your cross graphics card would be, wasn't it? And like that's $300? another really expensive one. This this might be a really dumb question, but I feel like if if I'm right, it would be totally genius. Um, so what if you got a stick of RAM and you got an adapter and plugged it into your phone? Would you have like more RAM? <laughs> and this is the point where I realize I forgot something. Did no, you I'm forget? Just kidding. No, I I don't think I did. I think you forgot I... the CPU, right there. That's my old one. Well, can't you have two? Tell me why you can't have two CPUs. Because my motherboard doesn't support it. Technically, some server computers do. So, each processor has cores, and different cores can be applied to different tasks. So, like, if I'm doing, on your your laptop, if I was doing, um, what's it called? Final Cut? No, well, you're using iMovie. If I was using iMovie, that uses, some programs are optimized to use multiple cores, but most programs only can utilize one core. So they utilize one core, and each core has threads. So threads oh. per core, certain amount of cores per processor, right? So uh -huh. the server computer where you are running virtual machines, you designate certain cores to a virtual machine. And so having more than one CPU, you have more cores, and you can run more virtual machines off of one, one machine. So... Like the Intel i9, is that a CPU? Yes, that is a CPU. Good job. Ever. So this is an i5, and uh -huh. this is an i7. So yeah, this is, I think these are second gen. Yeah, 20, 2400, i5 2400. This is an i7 2700K. So it's, honestly, I don't know why this upgrade is worth it. It's only 16% increase, but it's the max CPU supported on this board because this board has a different pin layout a different chipset mm -hmm. than that one that one can support eighth and ninth gen processors because of the pin layout and the chipset so if you did go higher i'd have to get a new motherboard and but what if what if you did put it in like what would happen would it just like it just wouldn't clock? fit and if it did fit it wouldn't run because it doesn't have the right chipset anyways gotcha okay yeah so i this is the i5 2400 that's an i5 9600k i believe it's a k uh-huh so that's a ninth gen i5 versus a second gen i5 huge jump well, i don't know how big but it's a jump in performance that's like this is not definitely not capable of a lot of things that's capable of but this is also the biggest gpu that i can go with this as well because the form factor so technically yes i can fit a bigger gpu and yes i up to a certain point i have the power to supply to it however at this point this is the biggest or high uh, that i know of there might, i think there might be a 1660 ti or something that might be I have a low profile that i i heard after the fact but i'm pretty sure 1050 ti is the only or highest you can go that has low profile form factor so this is as far as I know of right now in this moment, a hundred percent sure is that it's in my case and it fits. This is as high as I can go. This is the highest I can go on this motherboard i7. I don't think there's an i9 for the second gen. And sure I could put in a higher PSU in here, but it's ready bent and mutilated just to fit this in here. <laughs> and then DDR4 RAM is technically a little bit faster than DDR3, but I can't put DDR4 RAM in here because it's a DDR3 motherboard. Just, I don't even know what DDR3 technically is. It's like some different format of running and utilizing the RAM. Question okay. mark? I don't, I don't know. Don't quote me on anything. But it's basically back together. Nice. I'm going to throw it. So that's it? it? Yeah. On, honestly, from a hardware standpoint of how things fit together, once you understand 
what's what. It's really simple. It's like Legos. Like, especially this case. As annoying as it is, everything pops together and has a very proprietary, like, you know, snap to it. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Like, subscribe, comment. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.